Winston, good evening. Back here again, it would seem. I'd tell you what's coming up later, but we both know you wouldn't bloody listen, so I shan't waste my breath. But you should know, we're still having a few problems with your machinery. Locked buttons, screens flickering on and off, sparks and the like. I'm sure you'll manage without issue. Oh, and don't forget, you've got free reign of the SFX buttons now. Perhaps you should try not to undermine the talent, though, eh? Cheers! Lil C's Lil Chats. And tonight, the former singer is asking Dr. Adrian Atkinson Blimey what he's been up to since the cancellation of Incisors. Apparently, it's mainly jigsaws and arson. At midnight, it's the full territorial weather fertility. What have you got me? Report, and that's followed Nothing, at 20 by the Clen Fanino. No, come on, seriously. Not even a cake. I'm sorry, no. Professional performance of the new okay. territorial no worries. To bring tonight's programming. How old are you then, Cole? Okay, here we go. Big so smiles. I've actually gained a year. I celebrated 44 last year, but it's actually this year. Brilliant. You're 44. I'm going in five, four, <laughs> three. Good evening and welcome Spice to... Spice it up with some audience responses, Alex. I'm Megan and I'm joined, as always, by the inimitable Robin and Patrick. How are we? Well, we have got so much going on tonight. I'm excited. I'd say I'm about a 12, Megan. <laughs> on the excitement scale. Yeah, exactly. We have got so much SoCo stuff coming up. We sure do. We have celebrity chef Jordan Rankley who will be cooking up a store. We'll be announcing the winners of our big competition, Visions of the Future. And we'll be joined by a very special guest for a game of of Wheel of Truth. And I'll even be showing you how to make your own Leader's Day gifts. We've got all of that and so much more tonight on The Nightly Show. So and tight. Coming to you live from the channel. We will look for the truth, and unlike this channel, we will show it to you. You will hear some frightening things about this government. We are chilling and they are true. We have the evidence. Understand this. There is something wrong with the food. Right, let's have some applause on the way into the next section. Cases by Chef Jordan Rankley. But first, we know you love them, so Robin's going to give us an update on our lovely nightly show pets in Pet Corner. Fine, suit yourself. Well, Megan, first up, we have our hamster, Lord Cheeks. Now, he's a squat winter grey with the scientific name Adipem stultus, and he lives here with us in this cage. Hamsters love hoarding, and they actually have special pouches in their cheeks for storing food. 
he loves carrots, apples and chewing tobacco. Now, hamsters are nocturnal, so we'll do our best not to wake him up. But let's just see if we can... <laughs> well, the door has been left open. Um, so, um, it looks as though Lord Chinks has actually gone for a little wonder. Uh, but I'm sure he will be around here somewhere. In the meantime, let's say hello to our tortoise. Now, after last month's your vote, he's now, of course, called Slow Barbara. And don't panic, even though it is December, Rab's here doesn't actually hibernate. Let's say hello. Oh, she's sleeping. Oh, Babs. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, those are our nightly show pets, Megan, both alive and well. Back to you. With SFX, less is more, Alex. Or some very similar animals at the same time tomorrow. Now then. I hope you're hungry, because if not, you're about to be. Patrick Bannon is with Chef Jordan Rankley, and they're going to be showing us how to knock up a delicious apple pie. Mm -mm. Time to go into the kitchen. Don't forget the SFX buttons. That's right, and I'm joined here by I'm Chef Jordan here. Rankley. Welcome to the Nightly Show Kitchen. How does it compare to the kitchens you're used to? I love the colours. It's vibrant. It's fresh. <laughs> it's fun about all the arseholes. Yes? Sorry? What? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, you own six restaurants. You've been awarded nine Ballon Massifs across your career. And you've worked alongside the best chefs in the world. Tonight you've got me. Oh, are you worried? <laughs> Am I fucking worried? Are you worried? <laughs> are you fucking worried? Yes. <laughs> So, uh, what are we so, making today, uh, Chef? So, we've got a family over for Leader's Day. Yeah. They're hungry. We're going to make them a delicious yeah. apple pie. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> it's got sweetness. It's got the acidity of the fruit and then get the richness of that pastry. Incredible. Wow, OK. So, where do we start? So, we're going to start by making our filling. So, we've got about a kilogram of fresh cooking apples here. Mm. Fucking beautiful. And we're going to slice these up perfectly. Yep. And we're going to slice these up perfectly. And then, straight into the pan. Uh, so, uh, your new show, uh, Demon Kitchen Heart Eater, starts on Friday here on Channel One. So, tell us about that. So, teams of young chefs come into my kitchen and one by one I destroy them emotionally. And if there's time, I teach them some basic knife skills. <laughs> Fucking Patrick, what are you doing? What? <laughs> Shit. Is that how you cut? Fuck, you'll lose a fucking finger. Ooh. Don't worry, I've got spares. <laughs> right, so uh, once we've done that, we uh, set these aside whilst we make the pastry. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Bowl. Yeah? Okay. Sugar. Butter. We mix that together and then a whole egg. What are you doing, you fucking donkey? Are your brains the size of that fucking egg? Oh, no, chef. No. Shit. Right. Mix that with a wooden spoon and work in that flour, OK? Work that into a nice ball of dough, just like that. So, uh, what does the notoriously fierce Jordan Rankley do to unwind? <laughs> Shit, in bed. Yeah. What's that? What is that? Well, it's a bit, bit lumpy. Lumpy? It could fucking pass for a sack of spuds. Touch that. Touch it. <laughs> Yeah? Touch it. Pathetic. Yeah. That goes into chill. Pathetic. Now, we're mixing our filling. Chill. Now, we're mixing our filling. Okay. Apples, sugar, yes. cinnamon. Apples, sugar, cinnamon. Oh, so, uh, well, you own six restaurants across five territories. Which is your favourite? Are you mixing that or fucking it? What? Are you going to light a candle? Take it out to dinner? To fucking mix it for fuck's sake. Right. Now we're rolling out two thirds of our pastry. Oh a bit of flour into the dish. Uh, and uh, the filling goes next, right? Absolutely right. Oh, lovely. Okay. Then we're taking the remaining pastry, rolling that into a round, and that goes on the top. Beautiful. Mm. Lovely. Okay. Right. Brush a bit of water around the rim. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Now press gently 
all the way around. And we're cutting five slashes very carefully for the steam. And then brushing the whole thing with the air. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> oh my god. You, you, come here. Come here, you. Come here, That's you. a disgrace. I'd rather jam my eyeballs up my fucking arms <laughs> than look at that. I'd rather use my tongue to tie my shoes after the fucking shit kicking contest. Do you, you contest. Do you understand? Then it goes in the oven for 45 minutes. Oh, put your fucking head in the oven while you're at it. Useless. <laughs> you. Come here, you. You're the worst fucking thing to happen to food since cyanide. Do you know that? I tell you what. Fuck off! Oh. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> fuck <laughs> off! Okay, well, why do I do that? <laughs> Let's go now to Megan and Robin, who will be announcing the winners of our competition. Visions of the future! Are you taking the piss now? Well, that looks delicious. <laughs> if you want to follow along at home, then make sure you write in with a stamped address envelope and we'll send you the fact sheet. So, Robin, look at all these amazing entries to the Vision of the Future competition. Yes, we challenged you to show us your predictions of the future and we were just inundated with entries, weren't we, Megan? From wacky inventions to global problem solving, they are all amazing and we had the best time looking through each one. It was so tough narrowing it all down, so we have some amazing runners-up. In third place, drumroll please, <laughs> we have Hamish, who's three, from Lunwelly. <laughs> he calls this still life and future of God, and it really blew us away. Just look at the line work here, and I can really feel every passionate stroke of the brush. Mm. If you look here, you'll see a beautifully rendered, what I thought at first was a smiley face, or perhaps a cat. But I think if you really look, you can see it's actually a representation of the seeming futility of death through the eyes of the living. Indeed. He's also chosen to just leave a lot of it blank, mm. which I think is really interesting. If you know Hamish and his work, of course, he, he loves focusing on the negative space mm. rather than the image itself. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. And such talent from one so young, Megan. But next up, we have our second place entry. So in second, drum roll, please. We have Keith, 41, from Dunglees. <laughs> he was sort of aimless towards our younger viewers, but still, he has sent in his idea of the future, which he's calling Ravaged Earth. Indeed, he says, in his really rather detailed notes, um, deprived of basic resources, society will resort to a brutal system of weekly battles to the death where only the victor may breed. <laughs> He also says it's got in here, either that or about the same, but maybe a bit worse. I really love his attention to detail. You can see the sort of gladiatorial arena, and then what I can only assume is Keith himself pulling off this chap's head and shouting, um, Come back to me, Linda! Oh, Keith. Maybe if you spent more time outdoors and less time entering children's competitions, she might not. <laughs> special one there. And finally, of course, it's time to reveal our winner. All our runners-up will receive a day out at an inflatable happy land on an industrial state just off the A40. Sorry about that, Keith. <laughs> but our lucky winner will win the chance to spend the day at the Department of Change to see how our teammates are actually making the new future a reality every day. And the winner is from <laughs> I didn't like him much. I thought his Man of the People act was just that, an act. But in the six years since he's been gone, I started to wonder if he was the only thing keeping the brakes on the team. And I'm wondering if Julia Salisbury realises that when she reflects on his passing. Or worse, that she knew all along. It's hard to tell. <laughs> I love these robots having a little bit of a dance, oh. getting involved in the party, aren't they? This one seems to have gone a bit haywire <laughs> in what I can only assume is an ominous sign of things to come. Well, if our winners have inspired you to make some artwork of your own, do keep sending them in, and yours could be displayed in our gallery here. Well done again to everyone who took part. We're going to take a break now, but when we come back, we'll be playing the Wheel of Truth and making some lovely homemade gifts. Don't go away. We'll be back after this.
That's the break. One minute back. I don't know what you did, but it's definitely made things worse down there, Winston. Probably going to be even more difficult for you in this segment. Ah, what's the point? You don't listen to me anyway. Yeah, just do what you want. I'm on the bus. Not tonight. I'll get cars arranged for you both. Find me when you're done and I'll take you out through the um, loading bay. We saw 42 births today. A daily record of 4% fertility. Dwarfed, however, by a massive 9% fertility rate here in Territory 2, who saw an unbelievable 191 births today. Though a nasty cold snap brings bitter winds overnight, so not all sunshine and rainbows. No rainbows in sight over Territories 3 and 4, as a Category 2 storm warning means we advise our residents to spend their leaders weekend indoors. Though we're sure the happy parents of the 12 new children in Territory 3 will be thanking their lucky stars for an excuse to stay home. Though, of course, nothing to do with stars. More of a hot air, cold air thing. Next, this front of warm smiles heads across territory. It's playing havoc with the sound. It's the bad moves. out there. We're being stretched again. Be I have to use a high-pass filter. As they also it's a revolution, a Colin. Oh, can you ask them to keep it down a bit? And Jenny, finally, Jenny, where's Glyn? Can we get him out here? I'm not sure about this grandma one. He's right with our other guests at the moment. I just wouldn't say grandma. And grandma? Yes, grandmother's arsehole. That's much better. Oh, OK, everyone, if I could have your attention, please. Sarah just needs a word. Apparently, there's and been some sort of disturbance in the studio. Now, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, but I wanted to let you know that I've asked for extra security and they're already on their way. OK, ten seconds, so positions and pose. OK, this time you've said it. Laughing, and we're going in five, four, three... <laughs> Welcome back to the nightly show. I'm sorry, we were just saying we can't wait to taste Patrick's pie. Oh, I don't know, I think I could wait. Well, <laughs> here it is, fresh out the oven. Oh. Oh. Wow, it does look amazing. Jordan, how does our Patrick do? Well, let's just say that pie's got more crust than my grandmother's arsehole. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Well, come on, try it, dig in. Okay. <laughs> You better go and get ready for that next feature. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Every night we play a game of Wheel of Truth with our celebrity guests. But I know what you're thinking. Uh, Megan, we've only got one celeb guest. <laughs> well observed, viewers, well observed. Well then, I'd better bring her out. One for the state of the nation. And one for me. Best-selling author, lawyer and thinker. I mean, she's only the blooming team leader. <laughs> it's Julia Salisbury. I think you might be using those sound effects a little too much there. Welcome, Julia. I'm so happy to see you. Oh, Megan, you look incredible. No, I was just about to say the same thing. <laughs> now, don't get too comfortable. It's time to head over to Robin and Patrick as we play Wheel of Truth. With SFX, less is more, Alex. That's right, it's that part of the show where we pit our celebs against each other to see if we can break them. That's right, Robin. They're going to spin the wheel to pick around, and it could be anything from butterflies to slap my face. <laughs> they really have no idea. Lovely. In store. So, up first, we have Jordan. Oh, Let's give it a spin. Yeah, here we go. Give it a spin. Oh. Okay, it's fact or fib. Fact or fib. Jordan, is it true that you've been known to order takeaway for a dinner party and pass it off as your own cooking? It's <laughs> one fucking time. <laughs> one time. Well, I think if that pie was anything to go by, you did them a favour. Oh, oh, not so fast there, Julia. Fact or fib. Fact or fib. We've heard you've got a very interesting way of saving time during the laundry. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so don't judge me, okay? <laughs> what I do is, I, 
Oh, what is she doing? Look at least my job over this. Oh, we're all friends here. Come on. Oh, OK, OK. Mm. So, I only have one bra, oh. OK? And so, uh, one day a week, I wash it. Oh. <laughs> and on that day... Yeah. <laughs> I can't oh, wear no. it! No! Oh. No! Honestly, raise my taxes. We're clearly not paying you enough. Come to my dressing room after the show. We'll sort you out. <laughs> oh. Patrick, is all this talk of bras embarrassing you? Blushing. I mean, I'm not blushing. I'm oh, yeah. blushing. Oh, 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 come on, then, you, Julia, spin the bloody okay. wheel. Let's do it. <laughs> And you simply have to get yes. that face. OK, you ready? Here we go. Okay, Julia. Here we oh, go. who's that? Oh, oh my oh. God. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> no, no, don't. I think it's sweet. <laughs> yeah. The mullet is as popular now as it's ever been. Oh, <laughs> well, don't get too ahead of yourself there. Mm. Jordan, oh. who? Oh. Is oh. this? Does that look familiar at all? <laughs> wow. Well, I'm glad I was getting fashion advice from someone who managed oh. to make seven look like 85. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Just look at the doctor. I look like I'm haunting the fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 we've got to move on. Jordan, let's have another spin. It's my go, Dad. You go, go on. on. Sorry, I'm so You're keen. Let's go so much. Oh, oh well, you're in for a treat. Yeah. It's fat. Oh. Or fish. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you look under your podiums, you will find a lovely fish smoothie. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you both a question, and all you have to do is answer it honestly, or else you'll have to drink the smoothie. Okay? Okay. Are you ready for the question? Yes. Here we go. Which of your esteemed hosts is the more talented one? <laughs> <laughs> I need my fucking mouth. Do you know how much these taste buds are worth? <laughs> well, we've got time for one more Just quick one more. spin, so go, Julia, go! <laughs> Corner, where today I'm going to be ably assisted by Julia. Come on over here. 
happens? I don't know how you're keeping your dinner down. I can still smell that fish. <laughs> well, to be honest, I've had worse. I used to eat at Peter Clement's house. Oh, well, I hope you've got your artsy hat on because today we're going to be making something very close to my heart. It's our little studio. Look at that. Isn't it adorable? Oh, all of us there on the sofa. Wow. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, is that all you in there? Yeah, it is. If we can just get a little zoom in. There we are. Oh, I don't know about you, Julia, but I always leave my holiday shopping to the last minute. Oh, every year. I do it every year. Well, luckily, these make amazing gifts. Shall we get cracking? Oh, well, there's not much left in the bottle. Maybe not too. box here. And, Julia, that's it. Grab those scissors. I just want you to get rid of this front panel here. Perfect. <laughs> Will do. Are you big celebrators in your house, Julia? Oh. Yes, no, in my house we show our love through food, like big dinners, loads of drinks. That's the best bit about any holiday, it's all that food. This bit as well. Absolutely right, cutting along the line there. Do be careful with the scissors at home, make sure you're being supervised <laughs> if you are a child. <laughs> there we go, fabulous. We go. Okay, so it's going to look a little something like this, and I've got one here I made earlier. We painted it with a bit of poster paint, white to match our lovely curtains here in the studio, but you can obviously have whichever backdrop you like. Like a nice shiny gold number. Well, exactly like right. So we're going to make bits of our set now to put in the studio, perhaps a little desk. So I'm just going to grab this piece of card. I've just got it from a little cereal box packet. I think you... Oh, I'll give you this one, Julia. Oh, Shall thank I? you so you much. And all you need to do is cut along the lovely. lines there. Fabulous. So what's the best part of any Leaders' Day dinner, do you reckon? Oh, uh, I don't even have to think about it. Really? I love the three potato pie. Three potato pie? I don't know that one. You know, with the chips covered in the mash or wrapped up in a jacket potato. Wrapped up in a jacket potato. That just means it does that. <laughs> I don't know, but that sounds starchy. <laughs> well done, Julia. So now she's folding over a little bit there. What it's going to look like at the end is this little rectangular shape there. And we're going to pop it in the middle. A bit of sticky tape on the back there so it sticks down. Now we need a sofa. That's what we need next. We're going to make that out of a lovely paper cup. <laughs> Have fun down there. Over. Knocking it all over. <laughs> I've got one though, Megan. Good. Fantastic. Line here down the middle. Exactly right. Then when you've done that, around the bottom and again around the top. Well done. When you're done. Oh, there we go. It's going to look a little something like this. And look what I've done there. I've stuck some felt down. Nice and comfortable sofas. <laughs> yes, can't have our tiny Megan having an uncomfortable sofa, can well, we? Absolutely not. <laughs> She'll be on the phone to her tiny agent and getting someone tiny fired. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's only one thing missing, isn't there, Julia? What is that? A higher calibre of guests. Nearly, it's people. <laughs> so all we've done to make our little people is we've stuck a cocktail stick into a bottle cap. Mm, we just need a face for that now. Uh, I've got a good one here. I know it well. <laughs> it's me. I'm going to stick it down there. A little bit of sticky tape. Oh, my felt's going everywhere. There we go. Oh, I'm a bit lonely. Let's take Robin and Patrick over. Do, 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 do. Sitting down on the couch over there. There you go. And, and well, well, I'll make myself just comfortable just, just there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and these, of Lovely. course, are all made and cut out of our favourite newspapers or magazines. You can have any guests you like. Julia, is there anyone else you'd like oh. in a studio? Oh, yes. Well, well, I'm going to be playing Wheel of Truth with yeah, Ronnie from Heat Trash. Yes, put that way. Um, yes, he's going to be teaching me choreography and I'll be teaching him foreign policy. Mm. And, of course, you can decorate them however you want. Perhaps you're a bit, I don't know, nostalgic for the old look of our studio. We've got the blue studio studio down there or even a bit of retro red <laughs> i've got sheila quickstep being interviewed there by oh um sorry that's that's not supposed to be <laughs> oh mama that place oh bloody hell this is still on time for a break when we come back i'll be on the couch of chat talking to some of you and i just cannot wait we'll be back after these messages and we're out you know what winston I think I finally understand your disdain for this job, this place. Looking at this farce, what's the point? Why are we even bothering? These stories from my formative years and the uneven past are lovingly narrated by Should we be worried? We've got the Prime Minister here. It's good that she's here. She's the reason for the extra security. Are we going to need it? Possibly. 
They're back. It's not very reassuring. I know. Good thing I'm not your mum, right? my emerging womanly curves. After much pacing, and I confess, a few tears, I settled on the zip back boxy pleated skater skirt in dark blue with white sweetheart blouse and the necklace Harry had given me when we'd met in the woods and I'd allowed him to frolic in my glades. It's an honest account of my childhood because in the new future, there's no need for secrets. There was just so much injustice in the world, I realized, as Portia Hamilton Mann lured my best friend into the convertible her daddy had bought her for Easter. How had I failed to predict the perils of being the poorest postgrad? Both ever? at the same time, Colin. Over the course of the that is not a thing. Oh yeah, Kotosha doesn't run to my family. The problems are huge in circuses and casino heights. And brothels. Understand why we can never cry. Everybody okay in here? Yeah. Yeah, we would be if you stopped asking us questions like that. We're expecting troublemakers, but nothing serious. You might hear some noises, but it's nothing to be concerned about. The services know what they're doing. So, nobody freak out when the shooting starts, okay? The show must go on and all that. Tits and teeth. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Tits and teeth, armed and ready. Ten seconds, everybody. Best in the business, yes. In five, four, three. Welcome back to The Nightly Show, where it's time for the Prime Minister to face the toughest critics in the territories. You lot out there. <laughs> Call us on the usual numbers with your questions for the Prime Minister. First up, we have Humphrey from Hamble Bamblebury. <laughs> Lovely place. I'm hoping to retire there. Oh, good choice. <laughs> Are you there, Humphrey? Are you there, Humphrey? Hello, Humphrey. <laughs> We appear to have lost Humphrey. <laughs> we'll try and get him back, but let's go to another call in the meantime. Who have we got next, Patrick? Next up, we've got Mandy from Arsminster. Oh, I don't think I'll be retiring there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mandy. You're through to the Prime Minister. What's your question? You're through to the Prime Minister. What's your question? Hello? <laughs> Mandy? <laughs> What's going on, Jenny? We try not to talk to the critics. Jenny. The lines are down. Pull down to maintenance and get... We can't. All the lines are down. All the lines are down. Well, apologies to our viewers at home. We seem to have a few technical gremlins making mischief behind the scenes. <laughs> so while we're getting back up and running, uh, Patrick has a couple of questions that were sent in by our viewers earlier this week. It's your letters. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, of course I do. <laughs> First question uh -huh. is from Pat uh -huh. Trisha, <laughs> who lives on <laughs> Camera <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> uh, and what she really wants to know. Lock the door! Don't! Oh, lock the fucking door! Yeah. Don't do the CCO! Seal the doors! <laughs> you! You're Jenny, aren't you? Come here. You! Jenny. Don't be afraid, Jenny. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to hurt anyone if we don't have to. All I want you to do is to keep the show on the air. Do you understand? Just do your job and everything will be all right, okay? Just do your job and everything will be all right, okay? Don't be afraid, Jenny. Don't be afraid, Jenny. You two, on your knees over there. You two, Move! on your knees over there. Move! So, this is the famous couch of chat, eh? This is the famous I don't Good. answer questions at gunpoint, I don't Mr. James. Oh. At gunpoint, Mr. James. You're not at gunpoint, Prime Minister. You're not at gunpoint, Prime they Minister. They are. Oh, 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 please don't kill me, please, please. Nevertheless, if you think I'm going to answer to you, then oh, I'm afraid Oh, you don't to have to answer to me, Julia. <laughs> Are the doors locked and sealed? Yes, sir. No one's getting in around. Good. 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 All clear. Good. Thank you. Good. Yes, good. Thank you. Yes, good. Jeremy? Hello, you. <laughs> Why 
didn't you make contact? And we've only put you in their crosshairs. I'm sorry. Yeah. Rotten, selfish, selfish bastard. Sorry. Yes. Bastard. Keep the show going. Of course. <laughs> Let them go, Alan. There'll be no killing tonight. There'll be no killing tonight. Oh, sorry, I don't think we've met. I, I'm Patrick Bannon. Is that what you're telling yourself, is it? Is that what you're telling yourself, is it? Sorry for barging in. Hate what you've done with the place. <laughs> Me too. Would you like your spot? It's yours now. Would you like your spot? You wear it well. It's yours now. So, let's talk, shall we? So. Armed security are on their way, Mr. Donaldson. I know you know that. I would best make use of the time we have, then, eh? Well, I'll leave you to it, then. No. Well, I'll leave you to it, then. I think you should stay, too. For safety. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Let's welcome back the National Nightly News. Tonight, I'm joined by probably the two most influential people in the country, if not the continent. So let's see if we can't kick over a few rocks and see what's lurking underneath. Prime Minister, if I could turn to you first. I have nothing to hide. Except that which is already hidden. Prime Minister, what is not Ethendron? Prime Minister, what is not Ethendron? I beg your pardon? Not Ethendron. It's used in birth control, among other things. If you haven't heard of that, perhaps you could enlighten us in regards to acrobacterium tumefaciens. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, Mr. Donaldson. Well, that suggests a lack of attention to detail, Prime Minister. It's a bacterium used in the genetic modification of an organism. And I found traces of both these substances in every single one of the menu centre food boxes that I've had analysed, from across the territories, if you want. What exactly are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything, Prime Minister. I'm just pointing out the facts. Oh, my God. Is that why Kate and I can't have... So you blamed it on the radioactive clouds from your bombs? Before Stacy, we tried so many times. We tried so many times. Prime Minister, is there something wrong with the food? Is there something wrong with the food? Fine. You want the truth? will help your viewers sleep at night. Well, here it is. Six years ago, when we came to power, we had access to the real facts and figures. And they told us we were doomed. The population was expanding at an unsustainable rate. Within 50 years, we would be out of natural resources. We would war over fuel, and then inevitably food and clean water. It was no exaggeration to say that, that we were facing extinction. It was supposed to be opt-out contraception, a, an end to unwanted children, a chance to rebalance, but, but something went wrong in the testing phase. Nature took over. We never, I, I never wanted this. So you covered it up. And blame the sterility on the bombs. Oh, please don't lecture me on morality, Mr. James. Your hands are far too dirty for that. Disrupt only did what had to be done. Disrupt are not the answer. You'll just take us to an even more extreme version of where we were before. Your, your miserable policies will kill us all. I'm not the one who built the transition centres. No, you're from a time where people didn't even have the basic right to, to choose how and when to die. You turned children against their parents. We enabled young people to speak up about the abuse that they were facing. And guess what? Most of that abuse came from within their own families. Identity cards! Oh, Sterilised us against our will. I built a sustainable future. It's too much. That's not for you to choose. That's not for you to choose. If not me, then who? Who would choose it for themselves? It isn't at the heart of all this. You don't trust us to choose. You think you know best, you know what's good for us, and if we disagree with you, then you'll send us to betterment. That's why there's no news anymore, because there's no choice, so there's no point. There should be elections. 
Elections have been suspended. Time to unsuspend them then. If you want to carry on, you'll need a mandate. We have people ready to stand against you in every territory. People ready to stand against you in every territory. So, let's turn to you, Mr. James. Yes. I want to assure the public that though disrupt are occasionally forced to violent means, we are not by nature a violent organization. Jenny. Yes, Jeremy. Could you have this queued up for us, please? Yes, Jeremy. It'd be a pleasure. Is that from disrupt leadership? In a way. Mr. James, before you launch into a rather premature election campaign, I think it'd be useful for the viewers at home if you were to also answer a question or two. Of course. When we come to power, one of the first things we'll do is restore a free press. The truth is very important. No more hidden secrets. If you say so. From whom do you take your orders, by the way? From whom do you take your orders? I beg your pardon? Well, you're disrupt spokesman. But for whom do you speak? You know I can't tell you. It's too dangerous for me to say. It's too dangerous for me to say. I don't share those concerns. You see, I've met with them almost five years ago now, back when I was a news anchor. And I also met with them a week ago to discuss tonight's activity. I think they wanted to check that I've stick to the script, which really shows how little they know me. So this time, I wore a hidden camera. Would you like to see a little of what we discussed? No, you can't. She'll have them arrested. They'll be dead by morning. Not an unfair assessment. Fortunately, it's not to me. It's up to Alex in the broadcast room. What screen, Jenny? Screen four. What screen? No, you can't. My people will stop you. Cut the power to your machines. Well, I would imagine mine will be doing their level best to ensure that Mr. Donaldson's footage gets the airing it deserves. After all, my security forces will be here soon, and I imagine this will end very badly for all of you. Queued up and ready. Queued up and ready. Showing this will have consequences. Will have consequences. For someone not showing it. For someone not showing it's up to you. It's up to you. Alex, you got us this far. Please don't fall at the last hurdle. Please don't fall. Oh, damn. Glad I'm not making this choice. All our good work. And you're absolutely certain in your research. It's unpalatable but true. Advanced are covertly sterilizing the population. Why don't you just release this through your normal channels? Luther James, he is surprisingly efficient rabble rouser. The peasants respond to his more earthly qualities. But you, Mr. Donaldson, are a face they trust. We did not risk our operative's life to rescue you out of altruism. And afterwards? Once all this is out in the open? We anticipate considerable unrest, possibly riots. Followed, of course, in the restoration of democratic elections under our control, of course. Mm. Nature abhors a vacuum. You, Mr. Donaldson, will create that vacuum, and we should be there to fill it. That will take considerable resources. From what I understand, advance took your wealth. The visible billions, yes. Some markets still prosper. There will always be addicts. And those with carnal desires for livestock of all ages. A lucrative business indeed. And then there are the foreign powers outside the territories. Those who fear to follow the fate of my glorious Erkistan. For them, no price is too high. The folks like us are always well resourced. You need have no concern about that. We have the required funds to fight and to win. And once the fight is done, to make sure this aberrance is never seen again. A return to the natural order of things. The wheat rises to the top and the chaff is burned away. No more living side by side with ill-educated savages. Let the plebs pile up in the ghettos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A strict order, yeah, yeah. to ungodly acts. Everyone back in their place. Including our Mr. James. It amazes me how he cannot hear the Damoclean sword as it dangles above his head. <laughs> no, he's an ignorant bull. He sees only the red cape in front of him. And so it is with the low orders. They are lost in this new world. They will gladly walk back to old one, and they will be ours again, as it should be. Excellent. Excellent. You set me up. No, Alan, you did that to yourself. No, now do you understand what you're doing? Now do you understand why we have to? Oh, pathetic. 
Oh. Neither of you recognises your own reflection. You How long, Jenny? Your own reflection. For long, I imagine. Jenny? For any of you. Security are outside. They've been here for five minutes, but they're not doing anything. Turns out there's a lot of them who wanted children. We're already a few minutes over Megan, but with ratings like this, Bozeman's no fool. Do you want to take us home? It should be you. It should be both of us. You start. Before we go tonight, one final thought. There's so much to digest here, what's happened tonight in this political circus. The tent is collapsing and the ringmasters have lost their glitter. There will be elections soon, I'd imagine. You'll be able to choose. These two will run. A choice between a shit sandwich and a cold cup of tea. A circus of horrors. Two extremes, both offering their own form of misery. You can choose advance and be equal. In cages, like performing lions. Or disrupt and be free. To struggle and starve. Or you can do something different. You can run. You can stand. You can stop promoting the way things are and change it. You're good people and you are sensible people. You know the difference between right and wrong. So stop whinging and do something. Take responsibility. Because if you don't, it'll all be left to these clowns. And that's the worst circus of all. My name's Jeremy Dawes. And I'm Megan Wolf. Have a transformative night. And then make tomorrow better. And we're out. You're done. <laughs> this program is channel. No, all of Julia, you. not them. We're done. They got us both. Your security team say they'll escort you when you're ready. We can call you a taxi, Alan. We have Where would I go? Wherever you want. Happier, healthy. Am I under arrest? The team has never been stronger. I know you've made that impossible, Mr. Donaldson. But there are those who My bosses won't be pleased with you. And Child sex traffickers and wannabe dictators. They they're the natural enemies of the reporter. That they can drive apart our bonds of family, friendship and community. We'll do it together. Yes. Among us, clear as day. And then we'll burn the set. Division. I'm Jeremy Dalton. And I'm Megan Wolf. Our main stories tonight. The votes are in, and it's a decisive win for Accord. The new centralist party snatched victory from under the noses of the mainstream parties. Incoming Prime Minister Fatima Chowdhury called Accord's win proof that the major parties had lost the trust of the nation and signalled the end of extremist politics. Neither Advance nor Disrupt, who failed to garner even 10% of the vote between them, have released a statement. Later, we'll be looking in detail at the election results across the nation before Jeremy brings us a report on the recent unrest in Valdez. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolfe. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines 